Thank you for coming to an evening with Jim Gaffigan. Please welcome Jim's special guest, Jerry Evans. Thank you. That's very nice. People who have no idea who I am. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. Oh, you know what? Before we get going with the comedy thing, I want to show you guys something. I found this. I flew into Anchorage last night, and outside the airport, I, I found this on the ground. And I don't, in the back you can't tell, but up front it looks like, no, it's not yours, and it's not what you think it is, because I thought it was a dollar bill, right? But it's not. It's an ad. You guys seen these before? It says, disappointed? Jesus Christ won't let you down. Kind of just did. He just kind of did. Just right there. Just let me down. Uh, but what does that tell you? It tells you God has a sense of humor, right? There you go. At least I hope he does because next Sunday I'm going to church and guess what's going in the collection plate? <laughs> Disappointed? Well, see now. Now you know how we feel. All right. It's great to be here tonight because I've been all around the state of Alaska doing comedy and um, I don't want to brag or anything, but uh, a couple weeks ago we did comedy in North Pole, Alaska. I know, right? <laughs> North Pole, Alaska, where it's Christmas every day. That's their motto, North Pole, Alaska, where it's Christmas every day. Here's something you might not know. If you change just three letters of that saying, North Pole, Alaska, where it's Christmas every day, you can turn it into... North Pole, Alaska, where it's crystal meth every day. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest, I'm surprised it took three. I'm going to be honest with you, because I didn't. So then after the big North Pole gig, I did uh, Delta Junction. All right. I played the Clearwater Lodge at Delta Junction. And I, I wanted to find out what I was getting into, right? So I, I looked on TripAdvisor to find out what to do in Delta Junction. <laughs> there was a, the list was three. And the number one thing, I swear to God, proof check me if you don't believe me, the number one thing according to TripAdvisor to do at Delta Junction is the Alaska Highway. <laughs> so basically TripAdvisor is saying the best thing to do in Delta is get the hell out of Delta. That's what they're saying. <laughs> it's like, and they're not wrong. They are not wrong. Uh, but it's funny, because and it's easy to do that. It's easy, you pick on the smaller places. I call that the Alaska comedy food chain. Because if you're gonna pick on a town or something, you, you, you start with the biggest one, you work your way to the smaller ones, you work your way up the roads. That's just how it works. I mean, uh, Seattle makes fun of Anchorage. They do. But Anchorage gets to make fun of Wasilla. Wasilla makes fun of Fairbanks. Fairbanks makes fun of North Pole. North Pole makes fun of Delta. Delta makes fun of Salcha, Salcha makes fun of Moose Creek, and Moose Creek makes fun of a guy named Bob in a trailer. And that's it, that's the end. That's as far as it goes. Goes no lower than that. So, uh, but don't worry, I got a little something for the folks in Anchorage. Uh, and uh, I don't want to start off with the wrong foot because I know technically we're in Palmer, but there's a lot of folks from Anchorage here though too, right? The city? All right. So just a little, again, I'm going to do use this as constructive uh, criticism and a suggestion. Because uh, I know times are tough, and there's not a lot of money floating around, but I suggest everybody throw in a couple bucks. It won't take much, a couple hundred dollars. Uh, go down to Home Depot, get five gallons of white paint, and uh, paint some lines in the road so I know where the hell I'm supposed to be driving, because I have, I have no idea. And my friends are giving me instructions. They're like, okay, you should be on a four-lane road right now. I'm like, nope, it's a one-lane road. That's what I'm looking at. It's, 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 a, it's a really wide lane, but it's big enough for four cars, but there's no lane, so it's just a one-lane road. The only time I'm really sure I know if I'm driving in the right place around Anchorage is when I'm coming in and out of the city and I get in those little slot car ruts, you know, the whole, it's like, oh, this, is, this must be where I'm supposed to be. And those are work because they're, they're hard to get into and they're hard to get out of. You just get that whole, you can't, you don't know what I don't anyways. But, uh, and it's hard enough to get around Anchorage driving the way it is anyways. Um, I, I should make this another suggestion for you because this is something that they do in the States, which could work really well for you guys here too because you got this big road out there that has two lanes. Uh, down in the, the lower 48, what they usually do is like their slower traffic will get over on the right. <laughs> Just an idea, just a suggestion, <laughs> you know, 
Because they're not doing that here, I can tell you that. Because I, I drove out here today and I'm in a, in a hurry uh, and I'm behind these two cars and they're both going the same speed, which is way too slow for me. And it's weird, it's kind of like they're drag racing, but like, but like in a parallel universe where the idea is to go slower than the other person because because they're, they're driving there and I'm trying to find an opening and one slows down a little bit and I'm thinking, oh, all right, when they get in there, and just the other one looks over at him and goes, no, you know, and backs up. <laughs> but again, it's just people do things differently in Anchorage here. And some of you that don't leave here very much might not know this. Uh, another example is uh, merge lanes. Um, what they do in the, yeah, right, because in the States, they've been on them before, and on the merge lanes, the traffic speeds up to join about the same speed. And now, according to every idiot I've been stuck behind here in this area, at a merge lane, you come to a full stop. And if there's nothing coming, you don't go right away. You wait till someone's getting real close, and then you pull out in front of them. That's what you do. That's what you do. Uh, Four-way stops. Again, I got stuck in one of those in a parking lot in town, and four-way stops in the States, what they do is they, whoever gets there first goes, Show up at the same time, person on the right goes. They just keep it moving. Uh, I don't know if you've been stuck at a four-way stop here in Anchorage, but pack a lunch. That's what I'm suggesting. Cause it's, you're going to be there a while. Because I'm, uh, I'm stuck behind these four cars, and they're both just sitting there waiting, right? And they all decide about the same time maybe they should go, right? So they lift off the brake, and they start to go until they see everybody else moving, and then they stop again. And they, re they repeat that process until they gently touch their bumpers in the middle of the intersection. <laughs> the same thing with the, uh, the middle turn lane. They use those in the States. I don't, I don't think I've seen anybody use your middle turn lanes here in Anchorage or Palmer yet. I think the only reason you guys have middle turn lanes is to give your drunk drivers more room to swerve before hitting oncoming traffic. Just that. You guys need a little buffer zone out there. So. But I'm starting to get it figured out. I'm starting to get it figured out, especially downtown, driving around Anchorage, because usually it's like letters one way and numbers the other way, right? So I can like I can figure that one out. Except for that one street, the one street that plays by no rules. You guys know the one I'm talking about? Spinard. It's like, what the? It's no wonder there's so many bars on Spinard, because they're obviously designed by a drunk person trying to get from the airport to town, because it's like all over the place. It's like, there's no... I'm driving down a straight road, right? And it's like all of a sudden, Spinard passes over. Me. Oh, cool, Spinard. Oh, that's kind of neat. Drive a little ways further. It's like, wait, Spinard? Again, how did... It's like, at one point, I think I was at the intersection of Spinard and Spinard. And I don't even... I have no idea. That, that seemed that way. So, uh, so yeah, I like giving Anchor just a hard time as much as I do um, uh, Fairbanks. Oh, you know what? Here's what's something I forgot. I, I, I was looking... One of my favorite things to do is when I travel the state is I look in the police blotters in all the cities that I go to, find out who's been doing what weird where in the state. And this was in the um, Anchorage Daily News recently. And first of all, I know how you guys are up here. When you see something in the paper where someone's doing something idiotic and stupid, you go, oh, hey, they're from Fairbanks, right? And that's profiling, and that's wrong, and that's not always the case. Like this one, for example. This one took place in... Oh, Fairbanks, damn it, all right, well. This one took place in Fairbanks. This guy and his fiance were getting ready for bed, right? And uh, she was doing whatever it is female fiance members do in the bathroom. And he was doing what most guys do, he was cleaning his weapon, right? That's why I like Alaska, because some of you are laughing and the rest are like, okay, cleaning his weapon, of course, what else would you be doing? All right, I'm following you, yeah. Then what happened, Jerry? So the guy, cleaning his weapon, puts down his gun on the nightstand, gun goes off, bullet goes through the bathroom door, lodges in his fiancée's ass. Yep, according to the police blotter, that's what happened. Now, I'm not saying I know what to do to make a woman happy, but I know how to piss her off, to shoot her in the ass, that'll do it, right? And here's the deal, I hope their love was strong enough to see them through. I hope that they made it through all this, uh, and did get married, I hope so. Uh, but here's the deal, you know what, if they got married, you know they're going to argue. All married couples do. I don't know how the arguments are going to start, but I know how everyone's going to finish. It's just going to be her going, oh, what are you going to do, shoot me in the ass again? And that's it. That is it. You're screwed at that point. So again, I like making fun of a little bit uh, of everybody, and, and sometimes the folks in Anchorage give uh, Fairbanks and some other places too hard of a time, so I, I like to remind them of a few of their mistakes and things that they've done in the past, 
Here's one of my favorites. I don't know, and this was a while back, but I don't know if you guys remember at the uh, Anchorage Zoo, they thought it would be a good idea to uh, have an elephant. You guys remember that? Good idea, right? Furless creature, used to the sun, bring him up to Alaska, not a bad idea. So, it was Maggie the elephant. And uh, much to everybody's surprise, when it got cold, Maggie, like the rest of us, did not want to go outside and exercise. So I don't know if any of you remember this, but uh, the folks at the Anchorage Zoo built the first ever elephant treadmill machine. By applause, anybody remember that? Yeah, all right, so there you go. It was the first and only elephant treadmill machine. Um, do you know why it was the only elephant treadmill machine? Because they found out you can't get an elephant on a treadmill machine. You can barely get a human being on a treadmill machine let alone an elephant. So what they did is they folded it up and put it in the corner of the cage, right next to the elephant Bowflex machine she never uses. Ah. Ah. But again, digging it down here, having a good time. And I use it, it's funny because there's crime everywhere in the state, but I, I rarely see like crime or intimidation. But this actually happened to me last night because I flew in, I was in my rental car. I wanted to go grab, uh, go grab some stuff for the store for the weekend. So I go to the, um, the cars on Gamble. Yeah, yeah, thanks, now, yeah. A lot of people are telling me that now. Nobody told me that then. It wasn't like I went on Google Maps, okay, where's the nearest uh, cars? They go, do you mean the crack cars? I'm like, no, no, because if it did, I wouldn't have gone, but I did, I went, I went to your crack cars, that's what someone told me it's called. And, uh, and there wasn't hardly anybody or anything in the parking lot, uh, except between me and the store was a, a large group of very large black ravens. And they were just sitting there going into a McDonald's bag like it's nobody's business. And I don't know, our ravens love those McDonald's fries, don't they? So they were like, and they were not intimidated by me at all. And uh, I just wanted to go in the store. I'm not looking for trouble. I just want to go in the store. And they look up at me as I try to go around them, and they do that weird raven hop, the way they go, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> so I left. That's what I did. I got scared, and I left. I'll be honest with you. Because ravens freak me out, and I don't know if it's because I've never seen a baby raven, or, it, yeah, think about that, right? It's like, where, do they, where the hell do they come from? Uh, so I've never seen a baby raven, and a group of ravens are called a murder. Yeah, right? Yeah, right, so that scares me enough, because uh, I don't even like any large group of birds, and, and probably because when I was real young, and this is a true story, I actually got attacked by a flock of seagulls, and I ran. I ran so far away. No, those, those of you that are moaning, are, that's the correct response, that's horrible, but I, it's the stupidest joke, but I can't quit telling it. Thank you for, for putting up with that. All right, let's see what else is going on. It's been three years since I've been here, and a um, few things have changed. Uh, marijuana's legal now. Yeah. Which is weird for me, because I've never been that much of a pot smoker, but I did uh, way back when, when it was legal back in the 80s, because, you know, it was legal so I could do it then, so it's been a long time since I've gotten high, but now it's legal, and my buddy's trying to talk me into it. He goes, oh, you should try some. I'm like, oh, I don't know. He goes, it's, just, it's like going to a bar and having a glass of wine now. It's legal. I'm like, well, all right, I'll give it a, a shot. Um, it's much stronger now. I should probably tell you that. It's much stronger than the stuff in the 80s. And uh, so he handed me this thing. And I'm like, well, what's this? What is this? It's a, he called it a vape pen. I don't know if you guys have heard about these things. Yeah, so it's, uh, and I'm, in the old days, I would smoke, and to, you know, and it would like hurt my throat. You'd cough, and that was all part of it, so I could tell what I was doing. Well, this thing, he gave it to me, and he just says, well, take it. And so I, I inhaled it, and it's like, all right, that was... It's nothing. I don't just, so I took another one, right? I'm like, well, maybe I'll hold it in longer. It's like, it's not hurting me. I'm not seeing smoke coming out. I'm like, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I take another, and I go in. Pretty sure nothing. So I empty my lungs, and I take this huge hit off this thing, and I hold it in. It doesn't hurt or anything, and I blow it out, and I turn to my buddy Glenn, and I'm like, dude, I just took like five hits of that, and I don't feel anything. And he looks at me, and I swear to God, he goes, you're only supposed to take one man. I don't know if that's how he actually said it, but that's definitely how I heard it. 
All right, you guys sound like a, a, a great group. Uh, before I get out of here, though, I'll, I'll let me let you know. My name is Jerry Evans. If you guys, uh, uh, I have a website and everything called AlaskaComedy.com. If you guys do Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, I'd love it if you guys check this out or said hi. It's uh, just Alaska Comedy. You'll be able to find us like that. So before I head out and turn things over to, to the big guy, uh, by applause, how many people consider themselves true Alaskans here? All right, good. Cool, and me too. And me too, and I, so I wanted to finish with something like, uh, you know, something almost hokey like the Alaska State song, but now that's too hokey. It's like, so what could I do that's like that? And I notice every couple of years, they keep trying to come up with a second verse for the Alaska State song. I don't know if you guys noticed that. It's some PC stuff that I don't agree with, because like you, when I think of Alaska, I think of these little vignettes of cool things that happen in Alaska. So. What I did is I came up with my own second verse for the Alaska State song, and I'm not a very good singer, but if you guys don't mind, I'd like to close with that. Is that cool? Uh, the weather here is too freaking cold. Your balls can disappear, I'm told. The North Pole meth, the big ass truck, the Matanuska thunder. They won't let me say that. The northern lights, red, green, and orange I haven't come up with anything yet that rhymes with orange When you're outside and you have to go Just write your name right in the snow The great north star, it'll capture your soul Never lick a metal pole Yes, I live here till the bitter end As long as I'm getting my dividend Thanks a lot.